OMD with Electricity, a fine example of Technopop from 1980. And there are others, of course. There was uh, Yazoo, Ultravox, ABC, Visage, Blamage, China Crisis, Howard Jones, Thomas Dolby, Men With Own Hats, A Flock of Seagulls. And the rock world ended up being divided into two camps. Those who loved synthesizer music and the possibilities it offered, and those who hated it and saw that synthesizer music was a threat to rock. And not just rock. In early 1982, the British Musicians Union was so alarmed at the spread of this synthesized music that they sought to have the use of such instrumentation banned, or if not banned, severely restricted. On the road, synth-based bands faced some pretty rough crowds. Admitting that you were 100% electronic was actually kind of dangerous. Audiences could be very hostile. They didn't want to see a bunch of people dancing around on stage while machines did all the work. That was cheating. The Human League was kicked off a Talking Heads tour because the audiences hated their all-machine approach that much. You know how today some people hate auto-tune acts that bounce around to backing tracks? It was like that, times a hundred. But some managed to turn machines to their advantage. At first, when Joy Division reorganized his new order following the death of singer Ian Curtis, they sounded a lot like, uh, well, Joy Division. But after spending some time listening to dance music out of New York, their sound began to change. Keyboards were introduced into their sound, then sequencers to run multiple complex keyboard patterns, and then a drum machine. Yes, New Order did have a live drummer and a guitarist and a bass player, but they figured out how to combine those live bits with bits contributed by machines. And the best example of this synthesis of human and machine can be found in their 1983 single, Blue Monday. I want you to listen to how all these elements come together. If you've never heard this story before, you're going to love this. Whenever New Order played live, they hated doing encores. They just wanted to get backstage so they could drink, honestly. So one day they decided that they would just turn on Stephen Morris's drum machine and let it run while they walked off stage. The idea was the audience would continue to be entertained while they could get to their beer. But a drum machine on its own could be rather boring. So they decided to get a sequencer to trigger a simple keyboard pattern. Okay, that was kind of cool, but I guess we need a bass line too, right? Was there a way to program a bass line into that sequencer? Well, of course there was. Suddenly, New Order had the foundations of a new song, a song played entirely by machines. Okay, I'm not done yet. According to sources, New Order decided to take this idea into the studio one day. Unfortunately, everyone was tripping on LSD, and, well, they just weren't in great shape. They managed to get all the basic tracks down, but the band was so wasted that once they were done, the studio engineer sent them away so they could finish mixing the track in peace. When the song was done, it was released as a 12-inch single. A few radio stations played it, but the dance clubs went crazy for it. It wasn't rock, it wasn't disco, it wasn't techno pop, it wasn't really dance. It was just something different. <laughs> 